Hello everyone. In this video, we will study about twist drill nomenclature. So, here you can see the various elements and angles in associated with a twist drill. So, twist drill mainly consists of two parts. It has a body and a shank. And both are separated by neck. So, neck is a diametrically undercut portion between the body and the shank. So, here you can see a turpid shank. So, these are the various elements. You can see tang, then shank. So, this is the shank length. Then this is the body. Then this is the float. Then you can see the heel, land, cutting diameter, then float length etc. So, I will explain this with the help of a twist drill. So, here you can see a twist drill. So, this is the body of the twist drill and this is the shank. So, here you can see a parallel shank. In this figure, it is a turpid shank. And in this twist drill, we have two flutes. So, this is the first flute and this is the second flute. So here two long diametrically opposite helical grooves called flutes run throughout the length of the drill. So first is the axis. It is the longitudinal central line of the drill. So here you can see the drill axis. It is the longitudinal central line of the drill. Next one is body. It is the portion of the drill which extends from its extreme point up to the neck or to the shank of the drill. So from extreme point to the neck. If neck is absent, the extreme point to the shank, commencement of the shank that is body. So in this twist drill, there is no neck. So body is from this extreme point to the commencement of the shank. So this is the body of this twist drill. Then next is the body clearance. It is the portion of the body surface with reduced diameter which provides diametral clearance. So this is the body clearance. So this is body clearance. So here we have reduced diameter and this reduced diameter provides diametral clearance. So this is body clearance. Then next one is the face. It is the portion of the flute adjacent to the lip on which chip flows as it cut from the workpiece. Portion of the flute adjacent to the lip on which chip flows as it cut from the workpiece. So this is the flute. So this is a helical groove. So this is the flute. And this is the lip or the cutting edge. This is the lip or the cutting edge. This is the lip or the cutting edge. So adjacent to the lip on which the chip flows. So it is the portion of the flute. So this is the flute and it is a, it is a surface adjacent to the lip. So this is the lip. So this portion is the uh, what we call face. So portion of the flute adjacent to the lip. This is the lip or the cutting edge. We have two lips. So we have two lips or two cutting edges and this portion is the face. So in this figure you can see the face. See. So this is the flute and this is the lip and the surface adjacent to the lip on the float surface is the face. So this surface is this portion is known as the face. Now next one is the flank. Flank is the conical surface of a drill point which extends behind 
the lip to the following flute so it is a conical surface of a drill point which extends behind the lip to the following flute so you can see this is the lip and this is the flute so this surface is the flank surface this surface is the flank surface this is the lip and this is the following flute so this is the flank surface so from this figure this conical surface this conical surface is the what we call the flank this conical surface is the flank next is the flute so it is the helical groove cut on the cylindrical surface of the drill and it provides the lip so this is the helical groove so here you have two helical grooves so two flutes so helical groove cut on the cylindrical surface of the drill and the functions of the flutes are to cause the chips to curl then allow the chips to escape and the third one is to form the cutting edges on the point and also to permit the cutting fluid to reach the cutting edge so these are the functions of flute and the next is the heel heel so heel is the edge formed by the intersection of flute surface and the body clearance intersection of the flute surface and the body clearance so here you can see this is the flute surface and this is the body clearance so we have already explained body clearance so this is the flute surface and this is the body clearance and this edge this edge is the heel intersection of flute surface flute surface and the body clearance so this intersection this edge is known as the heel so this is the heel so next one is land land is the cylindrically ground narrow strip on the leading edge of the drill flute so on the trailing edge we have heel and on the leading edge we have land so the land keeps the drill aligned and the width of the land is measured at right angles to the flute helix so you can see this is the land and this is also known as margin so this is the drill bit so heel is the edge formed by the intersection of the flute and the body clearance so this is heel and land is the cylindrically narrow strip on the leading edge so this is heel and this is land so you can see you can see a small strip a small strip so this small strip is the land so it is a cylindrically ground narrow strip on the leading edge so this is the land this is land now next one is point so point is the sharpened end of the drill that produces lip face flank and chisel edge of the drill so this is point this is point it is the sharpened end of the drill that produces lips face flank and chisel edge and chisel edge chisel edge is the edge formed by the intersection of the flank and this chisel edge is also called as 
dead center so this is flank this is flank and this is another flank so here we have two flanks and chisel edge is the edge formed by the intersection of the flanks so chisel edge is the edge formed by the intersection of the flank so this is a flank and this one is the another flank and this edge formed by the intersection of these flanks is the chisel edge so this edge is the chisel edge and it is also called as dead center so now the next one is the lip so lip is also known as the cutting edge and it is formed by the intersection of flanks and faces formed by the intersection of flank and faces so here you can see so in this figure you can see the lip formed by the intersection of flank and face so we know that this is the face this is the face and this is a flank surface so this is a flank surface and this is the face and the intersection of face and the flank flank is the conical surface so intersection of face and the flank is the lip or the cutting edge so edge formed by the intersection of face and the flank so here we have two lips of same length so this is one lip and this is the another lip so this is the face and this is the flank so this is another lip so we have two lips and the requirement of drill lips are both the lips should be at the same angle of inclination with the drill axis and usually it is 59 degree so both the lip must have 59 degree angle of inclination then both the lips should be of equal length and both the lips should be provided with correct clearance so this is about lip so next is the web web is the thickness of the drill between the floats which extends from point towards the shank so here you can see the web thickness thickness of the drill between the floats which extends from point towards the shank so this thickness so from this figure you can see web thickness so this thickness is the web thickness next one is shank shank is the cylindrical portion of the drill which is used to hold and drive the drill so this is a cylindrical portion of the drill which is used to hold and drive the drill it extends from the neck and it may be either straight or tapered and tapered shanks are used in drills of bigger size so here in this figure you can see shank that is tapered but in this drill bit we have we have a straight shank so next is the tang it is the flattened end of the taper shanks which fits into the socket or drill holder it ensures positive drive of the drill from the drill spindle so here you can see the tang so in this drill bit there is no tang this is tang so next is the back taper or longitudinal clearance so it is the reduction in diameter of the drill from the point towards the shank and this permits all parts of the drill behind the point to clear and not to rub against the side of the hole which is being drilled and the taper varies from 1 is to 
4000 for small diameter drills to 1 is to 700 for larger diameter drill. So there is a reduction in diameter of the drill from the point towards the shine and you can see there is a very little reduction a very minute reduction 1 is to 4000 to 1 is to 700. So next is the diameter it is the measurement across the cylindrical lands at the outer corners of the drill here you can see the cutting diameter it is the measurement across the cylindrical land so here is the land cylindrical lands at the outer corners of the drill then next one is so this will be the so this is the land so this is another land so this diameter so this diameter is the this is the diameter then next one is fluid length it is the axial length from extreme end point to the termination of the fluid axial length from extreme end point to the termination of the fluid axial length from extreme point to the termination of the fluid so this is fluid length so extreme point to fluid so this axial length is the fluid length now let us go through various drill angles which are ground on a twist drill for efficient removal of metal so first one is chisel edge angle chisel edge angle is the obtuse angle included between the chisel edge and the lip as viewed from the end of the drill and usually the angle varies from 120 to 135 degree so this is the obtuse angle included between chisel edge and the lip so this is the chisel edge so chisel edge is the edge formed by the intersection of flank so this is the chisel edge and this is the lip lip so this is the flank surface this is the face and this is the face so this is the lip these are the two lips so edge formed by the intersection of flanks this is the chisel edge edge formed by the intersection of flanks and this is the lip or the cutting edge so this obtuse angle this obtuse angle is the this obtuse angle is the what we call chisel edge angle angle between the chisel edge and the lip so next is the helix angle so helix angle or rake angle is the angle formed by the leading edge of the land with a plane having the axis of the drill and if the flute is straight or parallel to the drill axis then there would there would be no rake angle so if the flute is right handed then it is positive rake and if the flute is left handed then the rake angle will be negative and the usual value of rake angle is 30 degree and it may vary up to 45 degree and smaller the rake angle greater will be the torque required to drive the drill at a given feet so this is helix angle or rake angle angle formed by the leading edge so this on the leading edge we have land so angle formed by the leading edge of the land with a plane having the axis of the drill so this angle this is the leading edge so this angle will be this angle will be the what we call the helix angle so this is a lip or the cutting edge and this is another lip or the cutting edge so this whole angle will be what we call the 
lip angle so this is a lip and this is another lip and this angle is the what we call point angle so the next and the last one is lip clearance angle so it is the angle formed by the flank and a plane at right angles to the drill axis and the angle is normally measured at the periphery of the drill and the clearance angle is 12 degree in most of the cases and the clearance angle should be minimum to add rigidity and strength to the cutting edge. So this is the various elements and tool angles in a twist drill. Thank you.